Getting past the Buckeyes, Mark Rogers TV, the voice of college football, breaking down every schedule in the Power Five for 2020. We have started in the Big Ten, and we have risen up the ranks in the division to the Penn State Nittany Lions. Penn State upset Ohio State in 2016 in Happy Valley en route to a Big Ten championship. For the past three years, Ohio State has won the Big Ten championship, and Penn State has given them their toughest test annually. Uh, this past season, of course, the Buckeyes went undefeated, beat Penn State 28-17 in Columbus. By far the toughest challenge Ohio State had the entire season. Even as it stood, even though the Buckeyes looked far superior to anyone in the Big Ten, that game was 21-17 in the fourth quarter. And consider that the Buckeyes finished at 9-0 in the Big Ten, Penn State at 7-2 in the Big Ten. Had Penn State won that game, they would have advanced to the Big Ten Championship. That's been the case for three consecutive seasons. Uh, and the other two games were excruciatingly close and tough losses for the Nittany Lions, blowing double-digit leads, 28-10 and 26-14 in the fourth quarter before losing to the Buckeyes, 39-38, 27-26. Two one-point losses to the Buckeyes in 2017 and 18 after leading by double digits in the fourth quarter. Otherwise, Penn State would have owned the Big Ten since 2016 and not Ohio State. But facts are facts and results are results. And Penn State looking to get over the hump. Please like, comment, share the videos, and subscribe right here at Mark Rogers TV, the voice of college football. Leave your comments down in the comments section about Penn State football and specifically your record projection as it stands right now. James Franklin has said, this is a great football program. I don't agree. Really good football program, top 10 or 12 in the nation, not great. He said this after the Ohio State loss in 2018 in Happy Valley after the game and said, they're a great program. They're an elite program, is what he called the Buckeyes, an elite program. We're just great. We need to get to elite status, and we've got to win this game to make it happen. But before Penn State can do that, of course, they've got to get to this date against Ohio State in 2020. So this is how it goes. And of course, our code over here on this side of the board is nothing's a sure win, but basically a sure win, almost guaranteed win, 90 plus percentage points in favor of that particular team in winning the game or a sure loss. Penn State has none of those this season. And then the toss-up games. And when I say toss-up, I don't mean just 50-50 toss-up. I mean that there's a reasonable chance that the other team might win the game. Not that it's a 50-50 toss-up, but again, a reasonable chance in the 25% range at least. Okay, Kent State's a win right out of the gate against the Max Golden Flashes, although Kent State, of course, a much improved football program, winning its first bowl game ever last year. With currently no NBA, NHL, or Major League Baseball, you might think there's nothing to bet on. Well, you'd be wrong. Bet Online still has hundreds of places to wager, from their online casino to poker and blackjack, all open 24 hours a day and all online. Sports aren't totally done. There's still mixed martial arts, golf, esports, XFL, and many more. And hey, what about American Idol? the elections, the spelling bee, and even the Nathan's Hot Dog Eating Contest. Be sure to use promo code CLNS50, that's CLNS50, to receive your 50% welcome bonus on your very first deposit. Bet online, your full access wagering solution. Interesting trip for Penn State going on the road to Virginia Tech. Lane Stadium difficult at night, probable night game for the Nittany Lions. They should be a substantial 7 to 10 point favorite, even in that situation on the road. Virginia Tech coming off an 8 and 4 regular season last year, but Penn State should win that game. But still, Virginia Tech obviously with much better than a puncher's chance in this game against Penn State. San Jose State should wrap up the non conference slate at 3 0, should, of course, against the Spartans at home. All right, now we start Big Ten play with Northwestern trying to bounce back from a 3 and 9 campaign going to Penn State, then this rugged trifecta at game, of games at Michigan, Iowa, and Ohio State. I'm going to count all those as 
toss-ups. Again, not just 50-50 toss-ups as I would consider the game at Michigan to be Penn State probably a 55% chance of winning, even though it's on the road in Ann Arbor. The Iowa game at home, more of a 60 to 70% chance for Penn State. Ohio State at home. Penn State, as it stands right now, would look to be more in the 30 to 35% chance of winning against the Buckeyes at home. So we consider those toss-up games. Even the game against Indiana. Consider Penn State's performance against the Hoosiers the last two years. At home this past season, winning 34-27. Close game, still in doubt with four to five minutes left to play. The game two years ago in Bloomington, Penn State again, survived by one score in a game that Indiana could have easily won. This time again, the return trip to Bloomington, I consider it again, not a 50-50 toss-up, but Penn State with a high probability of losing the game, probably 70-30 Penn State in that range. Down the stretch, overwhelming favorite against Nebraska, even though that game's on the road. Michigan State and Maryland at home. Of course, the Spartans probably the biggest wild card in the division considering the coaching change in Mel Tucker coming in from Colorado. Of course, Michigan State has been a difficult out for Penn State as they have been for everybody else under Mark D'Antonio, but different team, different era. A lot of personnel losses for the Spartans, so I'm going to consider that a win. And then Penn State finishes up with Maryland, whom they have completely annihilated in recent years. Check out the score differential in the past three years against uh, the Terps, uh, which included 59-0 this past year, and then against the doormat of not just the Big Ten, but Power 5 football, Rutgers with Greg Schiano taking over the program once again. That's the Penn State projection right there in terms of wins, losses, and toss-ups, but when we shake it all out, I'm looking at 7-2 and two in the Big Ten and 10-2 and two overall. That sounds mighty familiar, doesn't it, Penn State fans? Let's see. 10-2, and two, yes, in 2016, followed by another 10-2 and two regular season, followed by 9-3 and three in 2018, and then another 10-2 and two with a bowl win against Memphis to finish at 11-2. and two. Penn State has finished with at least 10 wins and a top-10 finish in three of the past four seasons. But can they reach the elite status of Ohio State? They most likely will have to beat the Buckeyes head-to-head -head this year at home. It will be a whiteout. We know that. Your thoughts on Penn State football right here at Mark Rogers TV, the voice of college football. Like, comment, share the videos on social media, and join me back here as we talk Michigan next.